Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome. My name is Kadeem Nichols, and today, this morning we're just going to worship the Lord. Can you worship the Lord with us? Can you worship the Lord with us? Listen, if you're at home, if you're in the car, I want you to help us sing to this morning. And open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing, overflow, turn it around. Open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing, we cannot contain. Let it rain. Come on, this morning we're going to declare that whatever situation you're in, God is going to turn it around for your good. If you believe it, come on, high five somebody at home. Come on, we're gonna sing this verse together. All things are possible. All things are possible for you. All things are possible. Nothing's too difficult for you. Nothing's too difficult. Hey, all things are possible for you. All things are possible. Nothing's too difficult for you. Nothing's too difficult. Say, I'm ready for change, ready for rain, ready for favor. I know you are able. Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Overflow. Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing. We cannot contain. I want you to sing along with us this morning. Say, let it rain. Let it rain, Jesus. We need you. Come on, let's declare one more time. All things are possible. All things are possible for you. All things are possible. Come on, really believe it. Nothing is too difficult for Jesus. God for you. Nothing is too Come on, I'm ready for change. Come on, if you're ready for change. If we're ready for God to rain down on you this morning, come on, sing it out with a loud voice. Hey, turn it around. Open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Oh, turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing. We come on, sing it out. Say, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Overflow. If you're in need of deliverance, God is able to set us free this morning. And we're going to declare it because we believe this because he has done it in the past. Oh, you have turned my morning to dance and you turn my sorrow to joy. You turn my whole life around and I thank you. I thank you, Lord, you will turn my morning to dancing. Lord, you turn my sorrow to joy. You turn my whole life around. And I thank you. Come on, if you believe it, come on, sing it out right now. You will turn my morning to dancing. I am happy when I'm with you, Jesus. You have turned my whole life around. And I thank you. Come on, if you believe it, sing it out. You will turn my sickness to healing. Yeah, you will turn my sorrow to joy. You turn whole life around. Yeah, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. You will turn my morning to dancing. You turn. Sing it one more time. Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing. Overflow. Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing. We cannot contain. Open the windows. Open the windows. And pour out a blessing. We need your healing. We need your power. Lord, pour out a blessing. We can 
receive it this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Those words are empowering me in my spirit this morning. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We bless your holy name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Wherever you are, the sun is always shining. Hallelujah. I am the head and not the tail because of you. I am above and not beneath because of you. I have the abundant life because of you. Hallelujah. I'm walking in your grace and your goodness and your mercy and your compassion because of who you are. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for the spirit of worship that is present on today. Hallelujah. We will not let a rock cry out for us this morning. Hallelujah. You touched my body this morning. You opened my eyes this morning. Hallelujah. I will give you praise and glory. I will worship you. I will bless you. I will bow my heart before you. I will give you praise. I will give you glory. I will give you adoration. I will say, bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy, saints of God. He's worthy, saints of God. He's worthy, saints of God. He's still on the throne, saints of God. He's still king of kings. He can still answer any problem. He can still fix any issue. He can still deliver. He can still set free. He's still mighty to save. He's still mighty to heal. He's still a strong tower. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you for the finished work of the cross. We thank you for dying for us over 2,000 years ago. We bless you this morning. You said with two or more gathered in your name that you would bless us with your presence. Father, we can't do anything without your presence. So we thank you for showing up. We thank you for showing out. We thank you for showing yourself strong. Father, we thank you because you're delivering even right now. You're setting free even right now. You're answering prayers even right now. Hallelujah. You're repairing the breach even right now. We bless you this morning. We honor you and we give you glory. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. We bless you this morning. Father, have your way in this service. We decrease and allow you to increase. It's all in your very capable hands. We thank you for watering. We thank you for sowing the seeds. And we thank you for producing your fruit. Hallelujah. Now let me get out of the way and let Brother Kadeem continue to bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We, we are in the presence of the Lord. And we will be remiss. If we don't just invite him in. And I think it's so important to have, in the time that we're in, I think that God has been trying to get our attention. He's been trying to get us to focus. And so he's removed the dressing up. He's removed the makeup. He's removed the suits. You are at home. Because he wants you to understand that where he is is home. And, and if you invite him in, he is able to change, he is able to turn, he is able to deliver, he is able to heal, he is able to set free. We sometimes find ourselves so confined to the church that we forget that he is a God of our homes, he is a God of our cars. So invite him in this morning. We're just going to sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And I want you to declare that over your home right now, or wherever you are. Declare it over your family. Lord, you are welcomed here in this place. nothing one more that would ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord oh I 
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord so we sing this out right now say Holy Spirit you are welcome dear come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord we invite you in yeah. there's nothing worth more that would ever come close nothing can tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord so we sing
by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. It's a presence where we find joy. Your presence, Lord. It's your presence where we find freedom. Your presence, Lord. Lord Jesus, we want more of you. We want more of you, Jesus. We need more. We need more of you. In our hope. In this country, we need more of you, Jesus. In this world, we need more of you, God. We want more of you. We want more of you, God. We want more of you. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, Jesus. We want more. One more, less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you, Jesus. Less of me and more of you. Come on, we're just gonna reverence before the Father. You're holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Just worship him right here. Father, we bless you this morning. 
Our hearts are overwhelmed with your presence. Come on, let's just worship. Let's just worship. Come on, everybody, wherever you are, just lift your hands in his presence. Let them see your submission. Let them see the palms of your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them see your submission to him. Hey, glory to your name, Father. Let them know that you believe he is all in all. Let them know that you believe he's the hope of glory. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We yield our hearts to you in total submission this morning. Yes, he's in that room with you right now. Yes, he's ministering to you right now. He's preparing your soil, the soil of your heart right now. So come on, just continue to worship. Just continue to worship. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. The Holy Spirit, we need your guidance this morning. You are the smartest person on the planet. And we yield to whatever the Father desires to say through you to us. We yield to that today. I heard Kadim say something on the order of a pretense. God, you've removed all the pretense. Hallelujah. Now the rubber meets the road. And we're getting down to where the true things of Christ and that which really matters is present. So God, hallelujah. When we remove the pretense, we have nothing left but the reality of your presence. That's who we need. That's what we need. That's the place we need to be in your presence, Lord. There's fullness of joy. And so we thank you ushering into your presence this morning a people saved by grace so Lord we ask and we yield to the Holy Spirit take us through the ancient text as we seek to uncover and release the revelation of God through the word of God because we are people who live not by emotion, not by reason, not through culture, but we live by revelation. So reveal yourself to us in the scriptures. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, good morning, TC. Good morning to you. I pray that you were blessed by, we call him family now. He's, he came here and he stole one of my spiritual daughters. So he, uh, he's family. He didn't steal her. He married her, one of wonderful young ladies in our church. And, and we're so grateful to have the relationship with Kadeem. He's... He's anointed, and we'll say some more. I think he bought his new CD, and uh, I saw something on the screen, say the greatest, is that? Okay, single, single, okay. We'll talk a little bit about it. Would you get your Bibles? 
your writing utensils, whatever you use to, when we go to work in the Word. I want you to join me as we pick up on this third installment of our series called The Spiritual Person. The Spiritual Person. Our text is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, and 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3. Let's read. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, this is Paul speaking, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. Even now you're still not able, for you are still carnal. Paul, in his communication with the Corinthian church, Again, he points out these three kinds of people. And basically, these are the three kinds of people on the planet right now. Natural, unsaved, carnal, saved, but yet pagan in thinking. And the spiritual person, the pneumatikos person. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But we also, in the previous series, uh, or installments of this series, we talked a little bit about the background of Corinth, how there was this likeliness and, and likeness to New York being a port city, and how Corinth was full of sexual immorality and deviant behavior, and how the church had become so impacted by the culture, by the dominant culture that it found itself in. I think this is a real classic study for the church to understand how to insulate itself against the culture. And Paul is pointing to the things that were happening in the church. People were taking each other to court. And there was a man sleeping with his father's wife and, and uh, the church did not take that and deal with it, so Paul had to deal with it from a long distance, and he said, as if, I'm almost, as if I'm there with you in spirit, I'm going to speak on this, me, Jesus, and now the church together. And so there was so much going on in the culture, just like our culture, just like New York. New York has an underbelly to it. It changes at night. <laughs> New York is an active place, never sleeps. A matter of fact, when you travel from New York to another place, people will recognize you sometimes as a New Yorker. Very similar to Corinth. And they said it means to act like a Corinthian was to, 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 to act like a person from Corinth. So there was a, a specific identity that this place had. And Paul is encouraging the church in Corinth He's pointing out three kinds of people, but notice how he's pointing out the carnal man. He's, he's speaking to the carnal man in such a way that he's advocating spirituality. Grow up. He wanted us to, he wanted them to grow up, to mature. And that's the objective of everything in God, to mature. So natural people are not born again. They care about the, 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 this world. They're worrisome about possessions like homes, money, because these things represent security to a natural person. A carnal person, while every now and then they look and sound spiritual, they hang out in the same place as a natural man very often. The word of God is not acted on enough to bring any consistent change. Their emotions are governed by a world they have not fully departed from. And so he's telling us, he's encouraging this church, become 
spiritual. Grow up. I wish I could feed you meat, but I still have to give you milk. And that's every pastor's dream, <laughs> to be able to give meat to the congregation. Two or more two are people, but you understand you have all levels of growth within the congregation. So the spiritual person directly, they're directly in touch and influenced by the Spirit of God, by the divine. The pneumaticas person, directly in touch and influenced by the divine, a pattern of life controlled by the spirit. That's a spiritual person. It's a mature person. According to the text, they're capable of discerning. They understand how to parse out the difference in the world. And they possess a strong sense of what God is doing. And that's what secures a spiritual person. Our focus in this series is a spiritual person because of Paul's encouragement. This is the person we must all strive to become. And guess what? Right now, we've got time now to really dig deep, to commit on a whole different level. And some of the things that Kadeem said this morning, commit on a whole, we, can, we have the time. We're, we're in our homes and we're, we don't have the distractions we normally have. We can give undivided devotion to what God is saying, to what God is doing. It's not business as usual. I think last week I said, I used the term, the urgency of now. There's an urgency in the spirit. So again, like, like when you use this word spiritual, you gotta differentiate because the world uses this word spiritual and it's just a word thrown around. We understand, and I've taught you here at TC, that when the word of God says he wants you to worship him in spirit and truth, these are the worshipers God is seeking. He's talking about the capacity to be aware of God, which every human being has, spiritual. But we worship him according to truth. And that's what differentiates the believer from every other faith or religion, every other belief out here. We worship God according Yes, in our capacity to worship him, but according to the person, Jesus the Christ. So we're not, we're not dealing with crystals. We're not on a mountain chanting somewhere. We know who to worship. And that's a spiritual person. So spiritual today, you got to clarify this word because it gets convoluted with a lot of stuff. The word spiritual is used today to simply deify humankind. Today it means being in tune with oneself, finding one's own inner path. You've heard all of this stuff that enables a person to discover the essence of their being. This is fundamental humanism. This was the objective attached to, to the statement by, by the serpent to Eve you can be like God. That's the whole premise. So when the scriptures speak about a spiritual person, it is understood our origin was in the mind of God. Just think, you were eternally thought of. There was never a time you were not on his mind until he decided to drop you into time. Oh, hallelujah. So the spiritual person understands that. They understand what that means. They understand they've been made in the image of God and being made in that image, they don't question their identity. They know their gender. They know who they are. They know who they are and where they come from. Amen. Being made in the image of God. They, they know and understand the will of God by the Holy Spirit, and they live in the freedom that that knowledge provides. So these are the unique characteristics of a spiritual person, the capacity to discern, to discern. And I like what we use as, as this understanding of a spiritual person. We said they can discriminate the transcendent. In other words, they can see that which is best even among different alternatives of good. My wife and I were having a conversation this week. Good ain't good unless it's righteous. 
Oh, you need to write that down. That's a good one. Because there are all kinds of good being presented. Satan, scripture says, comes as an angel of light. Why? To present a good thing to you. Never comes as himself. So you have to be able to differentiate from all of the different kinds of good being presented to you. What is transcendent? The realm of the supreme. And so Jesus spoke about discerning the times. Even Jesus went into this. Look at what he said. He said, you hypocrites. He's talking to the Pharisees. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret this present time? My question to you, believer. My question to everybody watching me right now. Do you know? Are you capable? Are you interpreting the times? You should be. That's why Paul encouraged us to grow up, mature, so you know what time it is. As I said in, in one teaching, you know what scene of the movie we are in. Amen. Amen. Jesus was rebuking this audience for, for being able to discern the weather, but not what God was doing. In another passage, he uses the word signs of the times. This is an expression of Jesus. For us to know the times we live in. So, so here's my objective today. Here's my objective today. I'm not trying to be an alarmist. An alarmist is a person who exaggerates dangers and, and prophesies calamities. I'm not, I'm not doing that, no. But we need to prepare for the times that are coming. You hear me, TC, this morning? We need to prepare for the times that are coming. And understand that regardless of what you see, we serve a God who is in the midst of the times. We are trained by the word of God not to ignore the facts, but to look at them and exalt God above them. Oh, that's, that's where we are. That's, that's what a pneumaticos person does. He doesn't ignore the facts. He looks at all the facts. They look at all the facts. They consider the facts, but they also understand there's somebody superintending the facts. Oh, hallelujah. I like, I like the whole idea of what Abraham, what it was said about Abraham. It said, without Weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. Man was 90 some odd years old. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. He was past the point. Since he was about 100 years old, God telling him, you're going to have a child. Whoa. The fact is, Lord, look at the facts. <laughs> He faced it, and Sarah's womb was also dead. So you got two dead people being spoken that life is about to come. Ah, oh, y'all hearing me this morning. I'm doing everything I can to keep from running down the aisles. You know? <laughs> because that's what the word does. The spiritual person is like Abraham, does not ignore the facts. Abraham was convinced what God had promised God could perform. Amen. Like I said, we look at the fact, but we know that there's someone over things, superintending everything. We understand that. This beautiful person looks at the facts while paying attention to what God is doing and what he has done in the past. Do we have a reference point? Yes, we do. Here are the facts as we know them today. Allow me to just mention what has happened since March, six months ago. No one told us. There has been some folks, I believe, that have said things prophetically. Personally, I haven't heard a thing until after the fact. But no one told us 2020 would be one of the most memorable years of our lives. That's a fact. 
No one told us about a pandemic in which thousands upon thousands of people would get sick and die. No one told us that we would be wearing masks as a rule. For the first time in my life as a black man, I went into the bank with a mask. Now y'all figure that out. Time, turn your neighbor and say, times are a changing. <laughs> they have changed. We have mixed signals coming out of the medical community. One group is telling us a specific combination of drugs will save your life. Another group is saying the data doesn't support those drugs saving your life. We have people calling the authorities on each other because social distancing rules are not being obeyed and that you need to pay attention to. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sleep that one. Right. The economy has come to a screeching halt. And all the sports in America, the God of America, has also ceased at one time. All in one time. We hear conspiracy theory on top of conspiracy theory about how and where this thing happened. We have people who are in denial calling the news fake. We have the leader of the country calling some factual realities not real. We have great fear being installed, instilled in the hearts of people with regard to their children and their lives. They're not sure, they're uncertain. We have a world believing and waiting for a vaccine that will be the saving grace. That's what we're being told. These are just a few of the facts. But there's another side. There are other sides to facts. Abraham showed us there's another side to facts. Like Abraham was old, to have too old to have a child, he knew on the other side of the facts was a sovereign God Amen. who is speaking in the midst of seemingly impossible situations. He always does. Spiritual people understand sovereignty. Let's define sovereignty. Sovereignty is the incontestable right of the creator, owner, and possessor. The incontestable right. What does that mean? Incontestable, not open to dispute. It doesn't engage in an argument. It doesn't welcome your debate. You can't counsel to see whether it's right or not. <laughs> There's no hierarchy, no group of people that are coming together to determine the outlook of whatever statement was made. No, it is the incontestable right of the creator, owner, and possessor. Sovereign. Everybody say sovereign. This is an attribute of, attribute of God based on the premise of God as creator. God as creator. I like even in Matthew 19 when Jesus, they're asking Jesus about divorce. Some of the Pharisees in two groups uh, were coming to him. The, the, the Pharisee group from Shema and the Pharisee group from the Hillel people. And they're coming to him, challenging him about divorce. And Jesus said, he points them back, it was not that way since the Creator made them male and female. Notice he takes them all the way back to Genesis 2. Yeah. Only two perfect chapters in the Bible, one and two. He takes them back to where the Creator is doing what he did from the beginning. we got to know the Creator Amen. and his intent. Spiritual people understand that. So as God as creator has an absolute right and authority both to do and allow what he desires. Are you hearing me? It's an attribute of God. The premise is that he, he has a right and authority both to do and allow whatever he desires. 
The word incontestable is important in understanding sovereignty. It makes him the creator and his kingdom set apart. At what point did, we, did God tell us to take a specific political party and join our train, join our wagon to it? When, when did that happen? Please give me the reference in scripture. We are citizens of the kingdom. Even when earth comes in conflict with the kingdom, we are to choose the kingdom. Hallelujah. And some words from King Nebuchadnezzar who thought he was God until he met the sovereign God. This is what he said. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar found this out. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say, what have you done? I like another translation. It says, what doest thou? I like what he said to Job. Where were you, Job, when I told the waters to run up onto the land so far and come back? Where were you? Who gave you the right to question me? Everybody say he's sovereign. sovereign. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. We serve a sovereign God. But the spiritual person understands that God is sovereign. And in spite of the facts, God sits outside the facts. Are you hearing me? And he can insert his authority over the facts we see. I like when he does a miracle. That means he slipped his hand into, into time. Performed something that only he can perform. A spiritual person thinks like God. While the scripture teaches his ways are not our ways, it also teaches that we can know them this way. It tells us that, yes, God's ways are higher than ours, but we've got to get what the scripture tells us. And here's what it says. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Yes, that's a fact. However, these things, these are the things God has revealed to who? By his what? His spirit. We are people who live by revelation. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So a spiritual person understands this. He interacts with the Holy Spirit. This morning when I woke up, I said, Holy Spirit, thank you for, for waking me this morning. I'm looking forward to the things that you're going to speak to my heart from the Father. Because he says nothing on his own. He only speaks what he hears. Smartest person on the planet. You better get to know him real good. Better get to know him real, real good. Because you're going to need to know him. This is why there's an expectation of spiritual people to be able to discern what we're seeing. Because we do it by the Spirit. There's a wonderful story that I need to point your attention to this morning. It's found in Genesis chapter 37. And I'm going to ask you, get your Bibles, because we're going to read one scripture. Well, we're actually going to read, yeah, one scripture out of Genesis 45. We're going to read a, a portion of the text out of Genesis 45. Go to Genesis 45 and meet me there. I'll get there in a minute. We will join you in a minute. Genesis 45. Hallelujah. The wonderful story starts in, starts in Genesis 37. And it talks about Joseph. It's Joseph's story, the son of Jacob. Joseph is one person that understood the sovereignty of God. Here's a fact. Even the story itself about Joseph required sovereignty. Because before Joseph went through what he went through, God had already promised Abraham a nation. 
If Joseph's family had imploded, it would have challenged that promise of God. Are you hearing me? So his sovereignty within sovereignty. <laughs> and Joseph was a dreamer. A specific dream he dreamed. He had, he, had, he had caused his brothers to hate him. Because the dream involved them serving him. And Jacob favored him to a degree. And so there were some issues there among the family members, among the family. It's dangerous when you favor one of your children over another. That's a dangerous place. When I teach leadership to pastors, I tell them the worst thing you can do is, is, is in, in, insert favoritism, especially with your family. There ain't no first family in the church. Are y'all hearing me? There's no first lady. All the ladies are first. In TC they are. Every lady in here is first. Pastor V despises that. So don't never call her first lady. We all first. All, your, all the women in this house, they're first. And we treat them like they're first. It's, it's the things that we do in church circles. that we don't realize what we're, what we're feeding into the church. Stuff God doesn't even introduce. All right, let me go on. All right, all right. Bad pastor. So, so Joseph's story, he dreamed, he caused his brothers to hate him. His brothers determined that they needed to eliminate him. So they found an opportunity. In the scriptures, they conspired to kill him. And after some discussion, they decided to make the crime profitable. So they sold him and he ends up in Egypt. But we see the sovereignty of God at work and Joseph eventually becomes going through so much. And I like this, even when he was in Potiphar's home and Potiphar's wife offered herself to him. I like what he said. He said, how can I commit that sin, a sin like this against God? Notice, he didn't say Potiphar. David did the same thing when he recognized his sin with Bathsheba. He said, I have sinned against you, Lord, and you only. When we start realizing that, that our lives are lived before God, when you live like the presence of God is right there, are y'all hearing me today? There's a fear of the Lord that keeps you in line and in harmony with his holiness. Hallelujah. And so his brothers conspired to kill him. They, they want to make the, the, the whole thing profitable. So they sold him. He ends up in Egypt. But, but we see the sovereignty of God at work as Joseph eventually becomes prime minister of Egypt. And he advises Pharaoh because a pandemic is coming. A pandemic of famine. And he prepares the nation. And he advises him on how to save the nation. And his brothers eventually, making the story sh a little bit shorter than it needs to be, it, his brothers are eventually brought before him. They don't even recognize him. They come during this national famine because they're looking for food. This was their pandemic. Here it is, during a national crisis, 22 years later, his brothers are brought before him. They did not recognize him, and he says these words in Genesis 45. This is what he says, Genesis chapter 45, verses 4 through 8. Let's get that. This is what he says. And so Joseph said to his brothers, come near me, please. And they came near and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. 
For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. In other words, the famine will last seven years. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth. Did y'all hear that? He's, he's talking about Abraham's promise. A remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors so it was not you who sent me here <laughs> I love this it was not you who sent me here but God he has made me father to Pharaoh do you hear that he made me this man's father and he, Lord of all his house and ruler over the land of Egypt. God did that. The key to this story, Joseph has to remind them that God sent him ahead of them to protect them. God accomplishes his good purposes through evil. Here's a word you need to know. It's called compatibilism. You need to know this word. Compatibilism is the belief that divine, that absolute divine sovereignty is compatible with human choices. It is that absolute divine sovereignty can be compatible with the choices that humans make. Compatibilism is when God incorporates our will and our choices into his own predetermined will. While God's predetermined will is working itself out, it does not always look the way we would imagine, but that's the idea of sovereignty. His ways are higher than ours, but he reveals it by his spirit. So you should know that in spite of what's happening right now, God is working some stuff out. You should know this in your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You should already be at peace. Regardless of all the hell you see breaking out. In the midst of it all, a spiritual person discerns God's will being worked out and that becomes peace to a spiritual person. Joseph is explaining compatibilism right here. Here's what he explains it. But Joseph said to them, do not fear for am I in the place of God? And in other words, am I in God's position that I can do you harm? As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? All the little private meetings, I don't care what they say. Maybe a conspiracy theory may be true. Maybe the 1% of the 1% have contrived all of this. We don't know, but guess what? It doesn't concern me. Are y'all hearing me? I understand compatibilism. Hallelujah. I understand every person on the planet was in his mind before they entered. Hallelujah. I understand sovereignty. I understand his will for my life, and he's not finished doing some things through my life. Ah. So I can't go nowhere yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You meant it evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Joseph is giving you the definition of compatibilism. He's breaking it down for you. Joseph is absolutely clear about the events of his own life. He knew how his life fit into all of this. He understood why his brothers did what he did. And that, that helps a spiritual person forgive an evil person because you understand even some of the evil that they're doing God is using it to work things out you need that evil <laughs> oh hallelujah Joseph understood the events of his life and how they worked out he could have had an issue with his brothers he could have had uh, unforgiveness present but no, he knew I had to go before you because many nations had to be saved. There's a bigger picture. 
I can't get caught up in the little issues, the mundane issues of the smaller piece. I got to see the big picture. And that's what an eternal perspective does. It causes you to see the big picture. Human intent will never supersede divine will. I'm going to say that again. Human intent will never supersede divine will. I'm going to say it one more time. Human intent will never, ever supersede divine will. It is sovereign. There's this promise of sustainability factored into sovereignty. There's a, there's a sustainable peace factored into sovereignty. God's promise of sustainability. Notice what he said. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. In other words, I'm anointed. My cup overflows. He has prepared a table in the presence of your enemies. My enemies have to see the goodness of God in the presence of all those trying to do us harm. The other part of this is this. The more enemies I have, the more tables I got spread. And the, and the more I eat. Did you hear that? The more enemies you deal with, the more tables are set up. But see, spiritual people, they rest in this place. There's a rest that they have because they understand how this works. Yeah. And that's why Paul was encouraging, I need y'all to grow up. I need y'all to stop dilly-dallying and stop playing church. What we call maturity in church is not maturity. Just because you can speak in tongues, just because a person prophesies, just because a person can pray better than somebody. Yes, sir. That's true. He pointed to their division. He pointed to the strife. He pointed to the exaltation of people pleasing. One exalted Apollos over Paul. They were both nothing. Yeah. And Paul acknowledged it. He said, one put the seed, another do the water, but God gives the increase. Right. Look to God. Stop exalting personalities. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me end with this. A spiritual person understands in order to see what God is doing, especially in these times, you must maintain your spirit. Hear me, TC. Hear what I'm about to say to you right now. As Kadeem gets on, we get ready to go back into worship for a minute. Hear what I'm about to say to you. In order to see what God is doing, especially in these times, you've got to maintain your spirit, your heart, so that it doesn't easily go places Satan is trying to take it. So what does that mean? I got to manage my spirit, my human spirit. I got to keep myself pure. I got to keep my eye gates. I got to protect what comes into my, what I see. Because what comes in the eye lights the body. I got to protect my ear gates. I got to protect the things that I can protect. Because right now, you're in, we're in some times. But guess what? We serve sovereign God. Amen. Are you hearing me? I hope you heard something today. I hope you heard the Spirit of God speak today to us as a people. Because this is where we are. There is nothing new under the sun. It may look different, but it's happened already. And he was the same God in that situation as he is in this one. And I trust him. Do you trust him today? Do you trust him today? Come on, lift your hands in his presence. Let's just worship him just for a moment. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, O God. We bless you today. We bless you today. You are Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Bigger than all my problems in every situation. There is nothing too hard. Come on, if you're home, stand on your feet. Come on. If you're at home, stand on your feet. Lift your hands in His presence. Let's worship. Yeah. Everybody in here, just worship. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. this morning and we thank you so much just reinforcing that truth in our hearts God I pray for every person is watching this morning God somebody became very discouraged but this morning their head has lifted because they heard truth and only truth sets people free we thank you for truth Lord the reality of who you are, the reality of your grace upon our lives. Father, I thank you even now. And someone has heard today and has made the decision to move from darkness to light, to embrace the sovereign God. God, I pray for that person this morning. I pray that their walk with you, Lord God, be tempered with grace. I pray, God, that even now, be it this house or another house, may, someone will, will be able to walk alongside of them until they can walk on their own two legs and stand on their legs and their feet and stand strong like a pneumaticas person. We bless you today. That's why we exist, Lord God. We exist to tell the world about Jesus. And that's what we're trying to do, Father. So I pray even now for every person now, under the sound of my voice, keep the house, keep the house encouraged, continue to show us who you are in the midst of these times. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Come on, give God a good praise in the place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to honor God in our giving right now. We ask that you would, as everyone has already determined in your heart to what you're going to give to God today, we pray that you use the app. We have True Center app that can be downloaded on an iPhone or a Droid. You can go to our website and you can contribute there. And I'm reminded about something David says in the book of Chronicles. And David is about to offer something for the building of the temple. 
And he makes this acknowledgement. He says, everything that I have, Lord, belongs to you anyway. Every dime, all the wealth that you gave me belongs to you anyway. So I'm just giving you back what belongs to you. So today, we, we, we still understand the principle of the tithe, the understanding of the offering. No, we're not under the obligation of 10%. It should look better than that because we're people of love. We're New Testament people. We have a better covenant. And so, no, there should be no obligation. He loves a cheerful giver, but he said, give bountifully and you will be received bountifully. Sparingly, you'll receive sparingly. These are his words. And when people love him, there's no limit on their giving. And so we appreciate UTC and what you've been committed to and how God has sustained the house over these last several months. We are so grateful to a faithful house. So we pray that you'll continue to honor God with all that he's given you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you this morning. Receive our gifts today. Lord God, receive them as Abraham did in his desire to honor that king, Melchizedek. There was no beginning or end to that king. Yet Abraham honored him with his gift, with his tithe, with his offering. And every time we come into the presence of majesty, we should desire to honor majesty. So we're in your presence this morning, God. Receive our gifts as worship in your presence. Let it rise like incense that comes off the altar. Let it become worship to you, because this is worship. It's an extension of our lives, God. And no, we understand it doesn't secure us, you secure us. If you don't touch our bodies, we can't go to work. So we understand, Lord God from whom the blessing comes. And this morning we choose to honor you in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessings, TC. Hear the announcements. Good morning, TC family. Welcome. I hope you enjoyed this morning's service. And on behalf of the entire TC family, welcome to everyone who may be joining our home online service for the very first time. Now, if you'd like to stay connected with us, there's a few ways you can do so. You can download our app or you can shoot us an email at info at truthcenter.org or just visit our website at truthcenter.org. Now, I know we all miss seeing each other in person and giving our hugs and kisses, but we can't do that yet. So a great way for us to stay connected is the gathering. This is our awesome interactive time of Bible study of the word. We meet this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. We're also continuing to have our corporate prayer on Mondays and Fridays at 6 a.m. This is a conference call. Now the information for both the gathering and the conference call is in the events tab on the website. We're continuing to pray for everyone on our prayer list. If you have anyone you want to add to the prayer list, send us an email at info at truthcenter.org or call the office at 516-621-3814. If you have any questions regarding today's announcements or any of our upcoming events, go to the website or download our app. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And family, most importantly, have an awesome day on purpose. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We want to thank our musical guest, our worshiper, Kadeem Nichols. We thank God for him and the gift that he is to the body of Christ. I want you to go and get his new single called The Greatest. It's on iTunes, it's on Google Play, it's on Spotify and Amazon Music. Anywhere original music is sold, you can get his new single, The Greatest. Again, we thank God for him. Thank God for you, TC. Look forward to being with you on Wednesday night as we dig into the word again. We had a great time today. Let's say something powerful before we leave this place. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for every person here, every person gathered. Touch their hearts and minds. Lord God, to see and perceive your truth. We bless you for it today. Let peace come upon them like a mighty river. And Lord, keep your people 
in your sovereign hand. We bless you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's say this. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Bless you, TC. Blessings.